how the militia renews offensive on civilian houses in Al Tuhaita. How the rebels continue to target academics throughout the country. The war in Yemen enters the seventh year while Yemenis continue to suffer. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English news with me, Roshan Fouad. Starting from Hodeida, where healthy militia renewed their shelling on civilians and properties. Sources in the city said that the militia targeted people in the streets and farmers in different areas with different kinds of weapons. The sources added that the healthy militia caused panic and fear for civilians by targeting houses in Al Tuhaita, Al Faza, and Al Jabalaya areas. Head of Hodeida Police Najib Warak discussed with Mutahir Al Qadi, a member of the parliament, the security issues in Hais. The meeting stressed to need to remove wastes in front of schools and public streets, which blocked movement of citizens. Warak stressed the importance of preventing the act of shooting at weddings. He affirmed those to seek to destabilize the security in Hais to be confronted strictly. At least 15 houses were killed in an ambush by government forces in Al Majah Front, west of Ma'rib. A military source said that the Houthi militia elements tried to penetrate, while the government forces managed to drive them back to their target point. Still in Ma'rib, sources said that the Houthi militia announced a truce with some tribes until mid September. According to these sources, the announcement of this truce from the part of the Houthi rebels continues to respond to an initiative they proposed to the Omani delegation over the situation in Ma'rib. The UN said nearly 3,000 families have displaced from Ma'rib since the start of the current year due to war. Moving to El Dala to the south of Yemen, where Houthi militants were killed and injured in a mine explosion. A source in the government forces said that anti-armor mine exploded in a group of Houthi rebels in Subaira area. It was reported that the mine was planted earlier by the Houthi rebels, then it exploded during an operation to infiltrate into government forces' strategic positions. Houthi militia admitted 25 of their high rank militants were killed during the past week. Houthis are reserved to mention the location where these members were killed. However, they held funeral ceremonies in the governorates of Sana'a, Sa'ada, Damar, Hajja, Ib, and Al Hudaydah. The Houthi announcement coincided with heavy fighting that took place in different fronts of Ma'rib. A security source in the capital Sana'a revealed that Houthi rebels directed their assassination cell to kill a number of academics in the coming period. The source added that the Iranian-backed rebels handed over the assassination cell had a list of names for university staff. The source revealed that the assassination list included the name of Muhammad Ali al-Naimi, the academic who was killed early this month. How this targeting cultural circles of Yemen, especially university professors, is a clear evidence that the rebels not only drive the country into war and famine, but also drive Yemen to darkness. More in, is the, in the following report. Hours after the assassination of the professor at Sana'a University, Dr. Muhammad Ali Naim, the Houthi militia security media came out with a video that is said to be of the killer in which he confessed that he was alone behind the crime because of an argument that occurred between him and the deceased on the social networking platform Facebook. This story was described by many as a farce, with an intention to achieve a moral victory for the militia and burying the threads of organized crime that targets academics at Sana'a University. With an evidence of several crimes that varied between assassinations, attempted murders, arrests, expulsion from university housing, and deprivation of payrolls for years, Observers stated that the militia has a track record of various crimes, even they managed to shut down the crime file through the published video of the killer. As the Tunisia street crime coincided with the militia's request to the family members, 
of the deceased, Dr. Yusuf Muhammad, to vacate the apartment in the accommodation of faculty members within 15 days. It is noted that the militia during the past three years took decisions to dismiss more than 120 academics and replace them with proponents who lack the minimum experiences or basics of competence. Yet, assaults and targeting of academics did not stop there, as university professors were subjects for kidnapping, including Dr. Adnan al-Sharjabi, who were missing for a month, and after his release, he died due to the mistreatment he faced inside the militia's detention centers. These facts confirm that whoever did not die with the bullet of a hired assassin will die suffering from starvation and distress as a result of deplorable situation because of the war. War in Yemen has affected all fractions of the society. People with special needs are no exception. This report sheds light on the suffering of this fraction, especially under healthy rebels. People with special needs are the weakest fraction of society, and those who find themselves in various calamities and deserve all the attention and care of all individuals. But the Houthi militia targets everyone without exception in its immoral war, and since its control over the joints of the state, has committed a number of violations against people with special needs. The war ignited by the Iranian-backed Houthi militia left tens of thousands wounded and injured who were affected by the painful reality and turned into owners who are struggling with a new and painful reality in times of war and defends its elements. Some reports accused the Houthi rebels of being the reason for raising the number of disabled people in the country to more than 4 million, while the rebel militia harnessed humanitarian support to rehabilitate its wounded, ignoring thousands of people with special disabilities, at a time when it increased the scale of its violations, abuse and corruption against funds, associations and institutions for people with disabilities. In Sana'a, the Houthi rebels exploited the disabled in various occasions by mobilizing them to participate in rallies in support of it or by reviving sectarian activities that organize this from time to time. All segments of the Yemeni society are suffering from children to adults to special needs. Until when will this suffering continue and how will it stop? The war in Yemen has entered the seventh year opening another sad chapter while millions of Yemenis hope for an end to the fighting, but each disappointment seems to result in despair. The following report looks at what's happening in Yemen after the seven mad years of the ongoing war. With the year 2021, the war in Yemen is entering its seventh year. The UN Secretary General in his appeal to funders at the annual pledging conference, reminded everyone that more than 16 million people in the country are expected to go hungry this year. Nearly 50,000 Yemenis are already starving to death in famine-like conditions. The worst hunger is in areas affected by the war. The importance of Ma'rib is clear from the violence of the fighting. Government forces have depleted other fronts to strengthen the resistance in Ma'rib, including contributions by groups whose relationship with the internationally recognized government is difficult, sometimes involving open hostility. Ma'rib is a major city under the full control of the legitimate government. The Houthi rebels may opt to bypass the city to reach the oil production facilities and take control of the road linking Saudi Arabia with the nearby governorates of Shabwa and Hadramaut, which would then be within their reach. But taking Ma'rib would increase their strength in any possible future negotiations. Yemen has re-emerged in Western headlines in earliest days of Joe Biden's US presidency. On the 4th of February, when in his first foreign policy speech, Biden announced that the ending of the war in Yemen is a diplomatic priority to impose, impose a ceasefire and restore long-dormant peace talks. The US would end all American support for offensive operations in the war in Yemen, including relevant arms sales but would also continue to support and help Saudi Arabia defend its sovereignty and its territorial integrity and its people. The implementation of this policy is unclear at a time when the healthy rebels are lobbing drones and missiles on Saudi Arabia almost daily. 
the U.S. Special Envoy, is now on his fourth trip to the region and is facing increasing criticism about his approach. Although fitting into Biden's overall policy of renewing U.S. participation in international organizations, the Biden administration's decision to operate within the framework imposed by the U.N. Security Council presents a major hurdle. The Security Council Resolution 2200 16 of April 2015 effectively demanded the Houthi rebels surrender and withdraw to their pre-2014 positions. Yet, since then, they have taken control of millions of people and large areas of the country, thus totally rejecting this demand. Calls for the replacement of this resolution with the more realistic one recognizing the reality on the ground have for years been widespread in civil society and among observers. Reading the ceasefire agreement confirms the Houthi rebels' assessment that it offers nothing new as it repeats Resolution 2216 as the basis for negotiations. Furthermore, its proposal for reopening Sana'a airport and access to Hudaydah port are both conditional contrary to Houthi demands for a full end to the blockade. Yet again, millions of long-suffering Yemenis hope for an end to the fighting, but each disappointment worsens despair. Yemeni seem to distrust of their leaders, whether military or political, national or foreign, has certainly been confirmed by events. Coming next. Yemeni children scream under healthy terror. Welcome back. The war in Yemen has hit hardest those who are the least responsible, children. This is what Save the Children organization said about the war in Yemen. Right now, 93% of children in Yemen are suffering and need assistance due to the violence that continues to devastate the country. Millions of children in Yemen are at risk of death, injury, starvation and disease. More about this story is within this report. The war in Yemen has overshadowed all aspects of life. Children, however, are the most vulnerable. The war obligated children to experience things they would have never thought about. They experience fear, panic and blood. The truth about being a child in Yemen is that you could be killed, injured, dropped out of school, brainwashed and forced to battlefields, in which you do not know how to kill and why. Yemeni children are even used by Houthi rebels as human shells in the war fronts. Human rights-related reports accounted that 640 children were killed after being recruited by the Houthi militia in the past half of the year. During the same period, according to reports, 333 children were killed and about 3,400 injuries were documented. Right now, 93% of children in Yemen are suffering and need assistance due to the violence that continues to devastate the country. The war in the country has caused widespread hunger and poverty, leaving millions of children in dire need for food, and they are suffering from malnutrition. Thousands of children are without medical attention. In fact, health services in Yemen are deteriorating. The same in education. Two million children in Yemen are out of school. The war indeed is going on, and the suffering of Yemeni children will continue, as long as the war goes on and on.
The local council in El Mecha held a meeting with partners to discuss the situation of displaced people in four coastal areas. The meeting focused on the needs of the displaced people and how to update their data. Worthwhile, El Mecha hosts hundreds of displaced people who have left their homes to seek shelter. A huge fire erupted in the electric power station of Sira in Aden. A source said that the electric current was cut off in one district in the city of Sira, while a technical team rushed to the station for repair. A committee was formed to report the causes behind the fire. Still in Aden, where sources in the city accused foreign exchange companies of swindling on people. The sources said that foreign exchange companies buy the Saudi Rial for 247 Yemeni Rial and refrain to sell it. They said the exchange rate reached 262 Rials and this disparity makes them a profit of 15,000 for every 1,000 Saudi Rials. Yemeni Ministry of Health and Population reported 39 new coronavirus cases during the past hours. The new number is the highest one since the emergence of the third wave of pandemic in the country. The total number of COVID-19 cases in Yemen rose to 7,347 cases, including 1,407 deaths. Yemen Minister of Health said earlier that the country entered into a third wave of coronavirus, calling on people to take the necessary precautions. The United Nations said thousands of families were affected by the torrential rains that struck Yemen recently. Yemen has been hit by monsoon rains that caused torrential rains in which significant damage to families, infrastructure, homes and displaced camps. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. How the militia renews offensive on civilian houses in El Tohaita. Healthy rebels continue to target academics throughout the country. The war in Yemen enters the seventh year while Yemenis continue to suffer. That is the end of the news. Thank you for watching.